Hey guys, welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very important topic, which is how can we make our renders look more cinematic? So here we go. And here we are inside of Marmon Set. Here we're going to start with our main construction of our scene. And the first thing I've created is this final shot camera. So this is just a normal camera. I went here and created this camera. But one of the most important thing, and I always mention this when talking about rendering, if you want to create a nice piece, you need to take three things into account. Your camera, your lights, and your effects or post-processing. All of those three things together will make up your cine cinematography shot. So if we look for a cinematography, what the cinematography or what does a cinematic shot means? It just means that we're conveying things in a slightly different way than what we would get from just like taking a picture with our phones or with our, uh, or like just a webcam or whatever. So usually it means that we are gonna have some sort of like specific type of light, specific type of shadows and tones. I would say one of the things that makes cinematic photography so obvious is the colors, the coloring and the color grading that we get. Now, I'm no expert on color grading, but I'm going to be showing you some tricks that we can use to generate something a little bit more interesting. And I found this picture right here, which I think is a really nice one. It's a soft, kind of like dramatic sort of look for the whole thing. It reminds me a little bit of like Lord of the Rings. So we're going to be using this one as our point of reference to try and create something here for our dwarf character. And we might even go like here to try to mimic this exact same like a setup which will be something like this. I'm using a pure ref, of course, and this is a the option to have everything on top. So whenever I start building my lights, I like to go to my sky and just bring the sky all the way down. Let's go now to our perspective shot here, to our main camera, and I'm going to create a point light. There we go. So as you can see, if we take a look at the character, we need to identify where the main lights are coming from. And you can see due to the like nice little shine there on the eye, that it's probably a rectangular light, like a big panel light with a soft effect. So in this case, we can use the spotlight, it's perfectly fine. We can change the shape to a rectangle, which again, if we had a more glossy surface, we would get that sort of effect. And we can just move this so that it mimics or we find the exact same place. So always look at the shadows and the lights of your character. You can see on this one right here, we have a very bright shadow on the forehead, which tells me that this light is coming from the top. It's probably something like this. Let's go W. Another thing I'm seeing is on the side, look at this, pretty much complete shadow on this side of the face. Right now, I'm not getting that. I'm getting this thing right here, which means that I probably need to move my light a little bit to the left like this so that we actually get the very nice like dark shadow here under the zygomatic arc. Now, another thing that I noticed, and this is very, very important when talking about lights, the softness of the shadow. CG lights, whenever you're using CG lights inside of Arnold, inside of Maya, inside of Blender, inside of anywhere, they usually get this very harsh shape right here. And this is because of the size of the light. If you have a really small light, think of this like, like a flashlight, you're gonna have very like sharp and, and strong shadows. However, if you have a very big, big light, like the sun, for instance, the shadows are always gonna have a little bit of a blur. And if you add like another sort of like curtain or something like diffusing the light you're gonna get even softer shadows so here instead of marmor said one of the things that we can do is we can go to the shape of this rectangle and increase the shape a little bit here and a little bit here and as you can see now we get this very nice like soft shadows around the corners of the character i do feel like this light is getting a little bit too much so i'm gonna just push it a little bit more so we get a little bit more light right here uh, you can also see the shadows here. Now, of course, the proportions of my character eyes are slightly different than the ones that we have here with this guy. So first rule, make sure to have soft shadows and to try to position the shadow as close to what you have on your character. We can change, for instance, the sharpness of the spotlight, depending on how soft or how like intense we want it to be. I want it to be a little bit softer. And uh, I'm also going to change the temperature of the elements. So we're going to turn on temperature. And you can see this is a very warm light. So if we start bringing the Kelvins down, we're going to get into this sort of like warm light effect. I think something like that is more than enough. Now, let's think or let's see how much intensity we have on the light because that's another very common issue that I see when people are lightening their characters. They would not like match the proper like effect. And even though I don't have a skin material, this is just a clay render, we can still try to push this brightness a little bit up, just a tad bit, to get to the proper values, which would be probably around there. Okay, we don't want to overdo it. We can still push these things later on on the post-processing side of things. So you don't want to do this like super intense. So that would be my first shadow. 
Now, we don't live in a world where there's only one light. There's usually a lot of lights around, and if there are no lights around, we at least have something called a bounce light. So in this case, I definitely want to add a little bit of a bounce light around my character. If we go to our main sky and we start bringing the, the brightness in, you're going to see that we get all of the light from this like studio that we have right here. And this is another one of those like super important tips. So tip number two or three, I'm not sure which one it is. You want to pick one HDRI that matches the sort of like like tone and atmosphere that you want to capture with your character so in this case i think this like abandoned house attic has this sort of like green hue that's a good option um there's also let's see which one we can go for like a forest or something but i actually think that abandoned one's probably gonna be my go to pick this four point is also a nice one you can of course download one if you want but yeah, it's just a matter of finding one that matches what we're going for. I'm going to go with this abandoned house attic. Now, very important, we need to move the, like, the thing around so that we don't get the main line hitting our character and pretty much destroying all of the nice things that we did. So in this case, I'm kind of going to go for like a rim light right there, and I'm going to bring the brightness quite down. Because I do want to get some information, some light information into the scene, so that we don't have the super like dark shadows, but I don't want them to override what I already have. Another thing that's very important, the background. Right now, the background that we have is really light. And if we compare it to the background that this character has, that one's a little bit different. We could add a plane, but in this case, I'm just going to go here. And the backdrop is going to be changed to color. And I'm just going to select like a, like a darker green tone color, like an earth color right there. Perfect. So that way, the lightness and the contrast of the character is going to be way, way more intense. So now if we go to our cameras and we go to our final shot, you can see that we're getting a little bit better. I'm going to rotate the character a little bit more. And one thing that I'm not using right now is uh, ray tracing. Right now, we're just working with the base, like, marmoset option. And that's why over here, as you can see, there's a lot of, uh, of light, where in reality, we would expect this thing to be casting some shadows. If we go to the render options and we turn on ray tracing, you're going to see that everything becomes darker and it becomes a little bit more cinematic as well. I still think that we need to move the light a little bit to the side. So let me go back to my main camera grab this guy right here i'm gonna push it to the side a little bit so we get a little bit more glow here on this part of the character now i i kind of like this sort of like light that we have on our sky but also at the same time it's it's a little bit weird because it's uh it's a white and i don't want that like camera or that light like rim light so i'm gonna bring this and i'm gonna move it i know we don't have that on our character but i'm gonna move it to the back right here to give me a little bit of a nice rim light being like or, or going around the character on this part now another thing that i see is that there is a little bit of a white light here on his shoulder i don't see the reflection but that could be like a nice little spotlight on this side of the character so i'm gonna go to this side and i'm gonna do another light and this is where where the cinematic light becomes interesting because you can add as many lights as you want and you would be surprised how many like specific lights you can find on a movie set or on a commercial set because you just see the nice picture at the end but you don't see the whole preparation that goes into making sure that the shot looks as nice as possible so for instance in this case i'm going to use temperature as well to keep it like a warm tone so i'm going to push this into like warm tones pretty similar to the main light and one of the things that we can do is we can bring the spot angle down so that it only hits certain parts of the character like this sort of like front part right here I mean, I'm going to go here, I'm going to rotate a little bit, so we're only hitting, like, the side face right there. So it's going to be very subtle that we have right there. We're, of course, going to change the uh, diameter of the shape so we get soft shadows. And now, again, if we go to our final shot camera, this is what we're going to get. So look at the difference without that light and with that light. It might seem very, very subtle, but that subtlety is the kind of stuff that really helps, like, sell and, uh, and create a more, like, interesting shot for our characters. I, I kind of want to play a little bit here, not with the intensity, maybe, maybe with the temperature. Just a little bit lighter on the tones, right? There. Again, we're going to be able to change a couple of things later on as well. Let's go back to the sky, and I'm going to bring the brightness a little bit up again, just to bring a little bit more light information, not too much, just something like that. And now, let's find a nice shot. So something like this, I think it's going to work just fine. Cool. So we got our camera set up. We got a nice like light uh, like distribution. If we want, we can add another rim light to like generate a little bit more contrast here. But I actually think that this is looking quite nice. However, that's not it. We're still missing a couple of things to really make this cinematic. One of those things that I think really helps a cinematic effect is a depth of field. So if we go to our final shot effect, we can go here to focus and we can turn on depth of field, ray trace depth of field. And this will allow me to find 
In this case, I'm gonna go focus distance and I'm gonna focus, of course, to my character. I can do sticky focus and click on one element. Let's see if that works. No. Let's try to focus distance again. This is a little bit too much, so I'm gonna bring this up to like a four aperture. There we go. Let's bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. The scale of the character is definitely influencing here. So we definitely need to change this thing a little bit. There we go. So 45 seems to be a good number. And as you can see, we're getting some really nice depth of field here on the shoulders. And the character is like very nicely in focus. I'm still going to like move this a little bit. There we go. Because I don't want to have too much depth of field. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit um, weird. So once we have this, once we have the depth of field, once we have the uh, the nice like background and the nice colors, the next thing that we can do is we can play a little bit with the post effects. And all of the post effects happen here on the final shot. And post effects, this is uh, every single like TV series that you see, every single commercial, every single render that you see out there has gone through some post effects. Like it's extremely weird. Like the only thing or times I've seen like renders actually going like straight from the software into like production are those like kids tv shows where they don't have time to render and they pretty much just render whatever's on the viewport so most of the images they're going to be seeing have some sort of like post processing on your characters in this case i'm thinking i'm going to go to light one and i still want to like push the light a little bit more there we go I'm gonna go back to final shot here, and if we go to post effects, there's a couple of things that we can do. We have all of this tone mapping, and tone mapping is one of those things that can really help. But before that, I'm gonna sharpen things a little bit. This is a question that I, we got like uh, uh, recently about some portfolio piece that someone was showing. They were like, how is it that my images don't look as sharp? You just need to add a little bit of sharpen because normal maps and everything tend to blur things out. So you definitely want to like crunch things just a little bit to get something interesting. A bloom is something that I use when we have some sort of like sci-fi light or something like that. In this case, I don't think it's uh, it's particularly good. So we're not going to use it. Let's hope this doesn't crash. I'm going to be really mad if this crashes. Okay, there we go. I just saved to make sure that we don't lose all of the, or I'm just saving to make sure that we don't lose all of the work. The thing is, I just decimated this guy. This is not like displacement or anything. So we're not going to be using bloom. So no bloom here. One thing we could use, however, I recommend always doing this carefully is fog fog everyone likes fog we just click here we're gonna get some nice fog into our scene you can change the the amount of the fog i usually don't like the lights to affect the character so it's just like a like a intense fog right there i am gonna use this fog for instance to give me a little bit of this sort of like green hueish and we can play around and that's gonna give me a little bit of color gradient as you can see right there so it's definitely gonna like change the the values of our dark colors into this sort of effect we can like modify a little bit of the lights there, maybe a little bit of light to to just push things there. And the fog is good. It's it's not it's not gonna hurt you, but just be careful. Don't overdo it because it's uh, it can look like a cheap trick. Uh, we're gonna go back to the final shot, and again going down here, I do like some like nice vignettes. So I'm gonna add a little bit of vignette to the character. That's gonna like focus the character a lot more. I do not like grain. Some people like to add grain to your, to their characters to make them like pop a little bit more. I don't think it's necessary. One thing we can do here is we can bring the roughness down a little bit. So that the skin of the character shines a little bit more. That's also going to give us some like nice highlights in certain areas. And finally, we're going to play with the tone mapping over here. So exposure is going to change how bright the render is. We can make this really, really bright or tone it really, really down. However, I actually don't like working with exposure that way. Um, I'm going to go to the curves instead. And the curves are the things that we can use to control certain things of our element. So our blacks and whites, the values of our image, are mapped from this 0 to 1. We do have some presets. So, for instance, we got this cool preset, this matrix preset, we got this negative preset. And, I mean, if you find something that you like, that's fine. But usually it's better to be a little bit more mindful of how you want to do things. So, one of the things that I notice here is that my light colors are not as intense. So, we can grab this point, for instance, and if we bring it down, as you can see, the whole tone of our image goes goes down so we're pretty much telling it hey if we have a really high value i want you to tone down that value and we're getting a little bit more contrast right here so we're all of the high points all of the highlights are bringing they're being brought down 
But then if we push this up, for instance, as you can see, what we get is this very interesting curve where the mid values, like the high mid values are being pushed up, but then the high high values are being brought down. And we can do the same thing over here. Like maybe we want some really deep shadows. Well, we bring the deep shadows here and then we push this one here. And look at that, we get an interesting effect. I'm not saying this is what I wanna go for. I'm just saying that that's what you can do. So in this case, a very common technique that people like to use is to do an S curve. We're gonna bring the darks a little bit down and then the high points or the mid to high points a little bit high like this and as you can see by doing this we generate a little bit more contrast on the whole thing it's a very nice way to do contrast without just doing a contrast right here because contrast is just going to push things very very heavily now we can bring this down and then push this up so that not all of the shadows only like the darkest shadows get to that specific point point. and again feel free to play around and find interesting things here on your curves now, the way I'm going to use my curves, though, is I'm going to go for the green channel, for instance. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm going to go to the green channel. And what I want to do is I want to tell it, hey, I want to have a little bit more green on the shadows. So I'm going to add a little bit more green here on the lower section and not as much green on the higher sections right here. So as you can see, we can push this and get a slightly different effect. I can go to red and then I can add again a couple points and be like, I want my highlights to get this sort of like pale effect right there. There we go. So as you can see, we're generating a slightly different effect with this whole thing. Uh, I maybe the blues. We can play a little bit with the blues. It's gonna gonna it's gonna get rid of the the effect. So I kind of like it like this. And there you go. And if you find something that you like, like let's say this new preset. If we go to all of the RGVs, you can see this is like my little modification of the curves. If you like this, you can just save this preset and use it on another render. One of the things that I'm seeing here is that my um, uh, shadows are still a little bit too dark. So I'm going to go back to my sky and just add a little bit more brightness, just so that my shadows are not like extremely, extremely dark. And we can go to the final shot again to the camera. And here in the post effects, we can play a little bit, for instance, with saturation. I'm going to bring the saturation down a little bit. Or actually up, maybe a little bit up, actually. Just a little bit up. I'm going to bring the clarity up. Clarity is kind of like a sharpen. As you can see, it sharpens things quite a bit as well. And then shadows, we can play with the shadows. We can make them darker or we can make them uh, lighter by pushing the shadows right here. Same for the midtones. We can make them darker. We can make them shiner. So I'm going to make them a little bit darker. And then highlights, you can see that how we only push the highlights right there. And I think this gets us a very, very nice effect. Um, kind of want to like sharpen things a little bit more right there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. By doing this, we now have a very nice, like sort of like cinematic render for our character. And uh, this is one of the things that you can do, again, to elevate your whole thing. I'm going to show you the difference. If we go back to our main camera, you can see this doesn't look bad. Like this clay render here doesn't look bad. But if we go again to our final shot, thanks to all of this, like little things that we've done now, we can get this very interesting effect. I, I kind of want to like bring the contrast down just a tad bit right around there. Now imagine this with textures and like proper materials and everything. Well, we will have a more complete effect. And that's it, my friends. Hopefully you liked this video. If you do or if you did, please let me know in the comments. Leave us a like, share and subscribe. It really, really helps the channel. My goal is to get to 10K subs by the end of this year. And it's only with your help that we can get there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And stay tuned because we're going to have a very important message, very important announcement in the next couple of days. So you definitely don't want to miss it. And make sure to check our Discord channel and our premium courses if you wanted to learn even more about the 3D world. That's it for now. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.